Welcome to the third installment of the Explorer Note readings. Today we'll be going over entries 1 through 15 written by Nerva that can be found on the island. Now, in order to conserve the feeling of lore, I had originally anticipated bringing in a different voice, but unfortunately that fell through. Hopefully, I can find a voice to read for all the other authors, but in order to push content out in a timely manner and in front of the eyes and ears of those who want it, I may have to read a few myself for now. So, thanks again for tuning in, and enjoy Survivor. It is the chaos of this land that is truly disturbing to me, even more than its most titanic and vicious beasts. Animals are meant to be savage. Even when tamed, they are not truly civilized, but man? Man is supposed to be above the animal, yet the people here live in squalor and fight viciously over scraps like stray dogs. I've convinced some of them to band together under my leadership, and together we have found safety and order. Unfortunately, they are untrained and lack cohesion. I'll have to fix that. Gaius Marcellus Nerva. Victory through discipline. I am reminded of my first command in Dacia. Many men questioned my rank, wondering why they had to follow a centurion so young. It took time to earn their trust, but it was necessary. I could not have even a single soldier questioning me in battle, lest our discipline fail. Without discipline, our sentry's formation would crumble, and the legion would be exposed. It is the same here. These ragged men and women will not become a unit overnight. But I am patient, and even more experienced than I was in Dacia. I may be far from the Rome, but I know this for certain. This island will know its might. Training grew easier once my charges began to see the results. In fact, they found such a wellspring of enthusiasm that their drills and chores alone cannot contain it. This morning, I found a flag flying above the armory. It was the symbol of the Imperial Legion, but with one of the island's flying lizards replacing the eagle and words in a foreign language replacing SPQR, I am told they say the New Legion. I admit, I smiled at the sight. Very well then. It's time to find out if I've created true legionnaires. We march at dawn. I knew I'd chosen a soft target to test my men, but I had expected a little more resistance. The tribe we assaulted was young, but supposedly they had seen some success as raiders. I cannot see how, given how swiftly they fell into disarray. Some even attempted to flee, but they did not get far. After scouring their fortifications for supplies, we raised them to the ground and planted our flag among the ashes. Let every savage and tribal pretender know the new legion has arrived. I am finally satisfied with our defenses against flying creatures. The solution was obvious once I stopped thinking of them as special. With any foe, the goal is to control their actions. So instead of trying to block flyers completely, we created apparent holes in our aerial defenses that enticed attackers into the kill zones. Our architect was grateful for the solution. He had been dreading trying to build a roof over the whole fortress. We have grown too large for that to be practical and soon we will be larger still. Our first true war begins soon, and I suspect that many black thumbs shall defect before its end. It did not take long for me to grow accustomed to the weapons of this world, many of which are called guns, according to one of my lieutenants. They are far more accurate and deadly than any bow, but like any weapon, they are only as effective as their wielder. In the hands of the black thumbs, they are of no concern. In battle, we have been able to bait the Black Thumbs into attacking a wave of durable but disposable beasts before descending upon them with our main force. Our attacks are concentrated, while theirs are scattered. That makes all the difference. The Black Thumbs are destroyed. Their leader was defiant, but his tribesmen did not wish to fight the inevitable. They offered us his head last evening. I suspect surrenders will be more frequent now. The Black Thumbs were the first, but they shall not be the last. Yes, I see it clearly. This is destiny. The gods have brought me here to bring order, to save these people from their own savagery. Janus pulled me across a bridge of time and space. Mars lent me his strength, and now I shall create my own empire in their name. I have allowed the Legion to take a reprieve from war, at least for now. We need time to gather our strength and plan our road to conquest before we march again. Augustus did not unite the Empire by rushing into battle after all. Such things take time, and more importantly, information. 
As I write, my scouts are mapping out the surrounding lands and observing any tribes that may oppose us. I have no doubt that they are not all like the Black Thumbs. One could very well prove to be my Mark Antony, and when I find him, I will be prepared. While a prudent general must take his time to plan, I realize that comfort breeds complacence. So, as my scouts range across the beaches and jungles, I have made sure to lead our main force out on regular raids. Our targets have been weak, mostly small villages or unsuspecting convoys, but they resist enough to make my men's instincts sharp. Letting them keep the meager spoils of these exercises have helped morale as well. Our actions have not gone unnoticed, however. My scouts say many tribes are avoiding our territory altogether now. Good. A fearsome reputation will serve the Legion well. Who could have imagined that a simple convoy would give the new Legion its first taste of adversity? Before today, the idea would seem absurd. They must have seen our approach, because just as we spotted our prey, we found our left flank beset upon by a pack of beasts. Though the creatures were smaller in size and number, they struck fast, they struck together, and they never lingered. By the time we chased them off for good, the convoy was long gone. Impossibly, I spotted but a single rider throughout it all. Who is she? If Mars has blessed me, does Minerva harry me? No, I was simply unprepared. I will not be again. It seems that some of our neighbors have grown weary of our raiding. Today, I received an envoy from the Golden Arrows who proposed a lucrative trade agreement between our two tribes, with the caveat that we never encroach on the territory or convoys of the Golden Arrows, or any of their allies. I have no interest in trade agreements, but I do know how to seize an opportunity. So, instead of accepting right away, I proposed that we ratify the agreement with his tribe's leaders on a neutral side. I have planned long enough. It is time for the new Legion to resume its march. News of my rather definitive response to the Arrow's proposal has spread quickly, but few seem keen to act on it. Who can blame them? Without their leaders, the Arrow quickly folded, and the new Legion grew significantly in power, practically overnight. The other tribes only managed to interrupt their cowering long enough to send another envoy, a man named Edmund Rockwell. Given the results of the last one I received, I almost didn't believe it, but apparently this man is special. The other tribes seem to respect him as a neutral party, an excerpt on this land. We shall see. I did not expect much from Edmund Rockwell, but he has surpassed me. He has a curious way of speaking, but he clearly possesses a razor-sharp intellect and a wide breadth of knowledge. Though we only met for half a day, I gained invaluable information about this island, which is apparently called the Ark. I shall have to send a scout to pinpoint where Rockwell lives. In addition to his expertise on the Ark, he is known to create elixirs that have extraordinary effects. It would behoove me to keep those out of my enemy's hands. It seems I was not the only one who was skeptical of Rockwell's ability to curb my ambitions. The nearby painted sharks mustered up the courage to harass several of our coastal fortresses, but in doing so they confirmed their nature. During their raids, they only attacked from the air and sea. They patently refused to set foot on land. If the sharks are at home in the ocean, then I will pull our coastal forces back and attack their outposts on the mainland. Once their island fortress is cut off from support and supplies, I can whistle it down to rubble at my leisure. The incident with the convoy was no fluke. The rider has returned, and this time we had plenty of warning. Reports of some beast queen joining forces with the sharks reached my ears days before the siege. Her ranks have swelled since the convoy, but there is no doubt it is her. Not only did she help break the siege, but for the first time in existence, the new legion is in full retreat. This cannot continue. I will not allow it. I will conquer the sharks, as I will conquer the entire Ark. But first I must destroy this so-called queen. Gaius Marcellus Nerva. Victory through discipline. Come back next time for 16 through 30 of Nerva. Thanks.